and we are getting a lot of people logging on right now. It's just going on all over the place too. We've got people coming in from all over the globe, especially on the other side of the pond. And actually it looks like we're even getting some people in the Middle East that are logging on. Wow. That is the really cool thing about these harebrained lives is it doesn't matter what time of day, somebody's ready to watch some hair. And uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna keep walking around. I'm gonna keep trying to show everybody what we're doing. I'm gonna give you guys a uh, quick overview. You can see Brandon's sectioned right off at the parietal ridge. It looks like he's just through the top of the crown with almost more of a square line. And then just off to just above the parietal ridge with a little bit of a triangular line on his right side and then sectioned off from front to back, which obviously if he's cutting a mullet, we're probably gonna have some disconnection from the front and back. Uh, we've got a good friend of ours, Rafael Velasquez is in. Great to see you, buddy. Uh, we have people from all over. Uh, please, as since I'm here, since I'm emceeing, anybody, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna do my best to give you guys the best angles possible in watching the cutting. If I need to change my angle at all, please let me know. And uh, right now, just to give you an overview, Brandon has sectioned a diagonal back section. Looks like he cut right along the front hairline, and now he's just cutting out a diagonal line. Looks like it's a bit triangular, getting longer towards the front. Uh, if you can want to call it A line, but basically to open up that ear while still leaving the little bit of softness around the front. So we've got some people from Canada. We've got people uh, from all over from the UK. Uh, thank you everybody for logging on. Please don't hesitate. If anybody has any questions, I will answer them if possible, or I'll feed them to Brandon to answer. And uh, if you guys have any uh, viewpoints that you want me to get, just let me know as I will move around as much as possible. Yeah, a lot of people from the UK. That's uh, it's great, to, uh, very great to see, because I have to say myself, I love the UK. Actually, uh, I haven't been to the UK since uh, February of 2020 which is really weird for me. I've been going there every year my entire career, but I was actually in London when COVID happened. So uh, it's, it's the, one of the first places I want to get back to though. Uh, hello from Switzerland, great to see you, Mark. And then, um, so Brandon, looks like right now, what you've done is you've created a little bit of a hard outline at the bottom, but soft at the front. What right. are you going to be doing with this haircut? So right now I'm taking a few diagonal back sections I've elevated each one up a little, creating a nice soft graduation, right? But I also took a little bit of a diagonal forward line and I put a little bit of a hard line. It's kind of an undercut just under here in that first couple of sections, giving it a, a, a strong finish line. And then I'm gonna let some of these sections kind of come over that and create just elements of softness above it. So it's not too hard, not too soft. I'm going to come in and detail the front hairline a little bit stronger as I'm about, as I'm done, you know, right now creating more of a, a clean rough draft into the back, separating here at the ear because I want to make sure that I over direct. So I've got a young lady named Sarah that's uh, in New York, but she wants to tell, hi, tell Brandon hi because she was actually a hair model for him in Tampa, Florida. And she said, those were great times. Oh my God, how cool, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Now, um, also a couple of people asking, oh, what's your favorite place in England? I personally love London. Um, I've spent so much time in Covent Garden, but I also have so much fun going into the whole uh, Camden Town area to kind of see a little bit more of the original punk rockers. They kind of always give me inspiration for some edgy hair. Although last time I was in uh, St. Albans, which was just outside of London, and I loved that area. It's kind of a smaller area, but I've got a good friend named Josh LaMonica that has a school there that uh, I was taking a class with him and uh, just kind of hanging out in St. Albans for a few days. Uh, but I love all of, uh, everywhere around London is uh, absolutely love. Um, can you demonstrate? Okay, so a lady named Delilah just asked you about your shears, the way that you're holding them. Um, can you demonstrate or show her how you're holding them from one section to an, uh, from one section to another? Okay, so some people like to flip their shears around. That's great. I, I don't do that. I will occasionally get them out of the way, but most of the time I move pretty fast. I actually work in the salon every day, 13, 14 appointments in a row, and I move pretty fast. So I don't flip it around a lot. I just tend to tuck my scissor down 
keep it out of the way. And then I'll section, and then as I pick up my next section, I'll section down, put my finger in place, and then slide my blade right across my finger, and then just cut, closing. Yeah. I think that's what she was getting at was the the way that you're actually your finger your uh, your scissor action the way that it was moving. Um, I think what you're, you're seeing what Brandon's doing is he's moving the shear and sometimes he's palm to palm and sometimes he's got the the top side of the the scissor going against his uh, fingers. Basically, what's happening is if you notice, Brandon's only moving his thumb. Okay, he's not moving his, his ring finger at all when he's cutting. So by only moving one blade, it's gonna make a much smoother cut. It's gonna make a much cleaner cut. The velocity of one blade going down versus two blades pushing is gonna keep the hair from pushing and make a cleaner cut. So what he's doing is wherever he is, he seems to be placing his still blade against his skin so that the, that blade doesn't move, the other one does, and it makes a much cleaner line for him. I think that's, hopefully that covers what, what you were asking. So here he's cutting palm to palm. Some other times he might flip it around. It's not so much whether you're palm to palm or whether you're cutting on the top of the blade. It's just that you want to make sure that only one blade is moving. So we've got people from all over. Once again, we've got some some people from the West Coast, somebody from New Mexico. Thank you so much. I know it's early there right now. I love the fact that people are doing that. People from the East Coast here. Uh, I have a strong feeling a lot of these East Coast friends of ours are watching because they're snowed in. Uh, one person from Philly, I think they got a good bit of uh, haircut. They're, uh, they got a good bit of uh, snow so they can uh, take some time to watch some hair cutting. So it looks like, Brandon, you're opening up around the ear now, right? Yeah, just gonna create a little bit of a carved out shape around the ear. She's got a cute little tattoo right here, so we're gonna expose that. And then, you know, we're gonna keep all of her length, so I just wanted to create that little bit of graduation right here, combing the hair down, working the shape a little bit stronger, and then when I push that back, it'll sort of graduate back and really open that up. So it'll push that open. And then we'll leave that disconnected right here and it'll just drop into place into her length. I, mean, I really like her length a lot. Yeah, I was gonna say right now, just looking here, this whole profile look on Stephanie has made her cheekbones look so much stronger. Her jawline looks stronger. The whole C shaping you have around her ear with those little tendrils kind of coming in. I think it's, I mean, immediately just doing those few snips, that little bit through the side has made a big difference in the overall look. So we're gonna just keep connecting. I like what's happening there, but I wanna connect in here. So I'm just gonna disconnect right through here and then connect by elevating up. And come back and through I'm on the step other around, side. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. step around to this side. And then I'm gonna shift my fingers around to where I'm really pointing down because I want that to tie together. We have a lot of people saying hi to you. Um, Gosh, from all over, uh, <laughs> some people informing me about how much snow they do have, that there's uh, <laughs> that there was three feet in Massachusetts, and that Philly isn't too bad, that they only had about five inches. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia, where we do not experience five inches of snow without shutting down for at least a week. So uh, you can say not bad five inches, but to those of us down here in the South, that would be, that would be crippling to our city. So um, we've also got a few other people coming in. One lady actually from Bombay. I think that you were the first person that I spoke to from Bombay today. That's awesome to have somebody from um, that side of the world. I, get, I do believe you guys are probably about 10 hours ahead of us. So it's probably pretty late at night there. Uh, another person, somebody that I deeply admire just said hello, Sid Satong, who I think if anybody ever wants to watch somebody who does both men and women's hair as well as anybody, uh, he's great. I mean, an old Sassoon guy who's been phenomenal at cutting hair and really made a name for himself in the barbering world. If you ever want to learn about, you know, proper hair cutting, for proper barbering, proper shaving, he's so well diverse. It's really, it's really interesting to see somebody that has such uh, such a diverse uh, teaching kit. So now we're just gonna keep working through. 
And it looks like you're using a stationary guide at this point, correct? I am. I started over directing back to a stationary guide directly above the ear to create that kind of sweeping graduation. And then I'm going to have a little bit of a disconnection over that to push this forward. And we'll start from the center here and start working diagonal sections back now. So with that there, we're going to start in the center here all the way down. We're leaving her length. We're just tying together to the top. So what we're gonna do is get this hair nice and clean and get it out of the way. Let's step back into the light. Do my best to have to step right. into your little light. Yeah, there we go. Get this out of the way. Someone from, uh, actually from Augusta just said hello. So uh, if you're in Augusta, you know that, uh, that five inches would probably cripple Augusta as well. So right now we're working through, it looks like, so Brandon worked through this side panel that I'm gonna show you, used diagonal back section to create a very high graduation that ended up using a stationary guide just right here above uh, what I would call the cartilage area of the ear. And then use that as a stationary guide by cutting from short to long to really create a nice C shape of a mullet here. Now what Brandon's doing is he's starting in the center He's not taking, you can see the outline is falling out pretty much right at the bottom of the occipital bone. And he's kind of cutting more of like a flat layer. By creating that flat line, it's actually creating a concave because of the roundness of the head. So what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna collapse right there at the crown. But then I do know that above the crown, it'll allow us to have a little bit of movement. Um, and that's really gonna, I know Stephanie quite well. Um, we've worked together for years. Uh, we've traveled together and I know that Stephanie has a, quite a bit of hair, but she's also one of those people who likes to have edgy hair. And a lot of times when you have extremely thick hair, it takes a lot of work to get the weight out of it to create you know, the movement that she likes to have. And by creating this internal concave, basically from just on the top of the occipital bone to just above the crown, that's gonna allow this hair to really move. And uh, it's, I, I know this is gonna look great. It's already starting to look good. And you know, we still have about half a haircut to go. So I'm starting to pivot my sections from the crown so that I'm gonna be pushing to the same point where I overdirected there but this will be disconnected over the disconnection underneath here and pushing that way. Also in the same angles that are pushing here in the short disconnection, we're gonna be having these pushed forward as much as possible from the back. So something that he's doing by doing that is something that really where I was saying before how Brandon's an amazing technical hairdresser, but he's also an amazing creative hairdresser because a lot of creative hairdressing, let's call a spade a spade, is just ugly. He's making something that could look really ugly, look really beautiful because he's focusing on the way that weight shifts. He's working this short piece in the crown so that we can have the movement and the creativity that Stephanie likes, but he's also being really cautious about where the weight is shifting. Because the truth of the matter is this, hair is no different than any kind of outfit that you wear, um, any kind of piece of jewelry. It is an accessory piece. It's a very important accessory piece because it's something that you wear all the time, but he's accentuating Stephanie's jaw and cheekbone by creating that weight pushing to the points where he created the where he created his stationary guide as well as his outline just above her cheek so that's something that really in my opinion makes a creative hairdresser a great hairdresser when you can actually take something that's really cool really edgy and make it pretty we're getting people from all over um, you know what, I want to say hi to everybody who's saying hi to me. Jody, good to see you. I hope everybody is doing well. I'm getting people now from South America that are logging on uh, and out from, you know, my favorite town in the world, New York City. Uh, someone named Mario, I want to say hi to you. And then it looks like we are just getting tons of people constantly and we're getting a lot of comments about how good the hair is starting to look and how great of hair cutting you are showing. Let me get a little bit closer right there. Tell everyone, thank you very much. It's uh, an honor and a pleasure to always work with Daniel, with Hairbrained, and just to be able to kind of show off some of the things that I've learned over the last 30 years of doing hair, but you know, really starting to see that shape now. It's amazing, like I'm just looking at this, this profile 
and between yeah that C shaping which is it's almost it's almost accenting the way that a graduated bob would accent your jawline and then her little point at the front accenting your cheekbone it's just it's really a great shape even though it's edgy it's still pretty which uh, mm -hmm. I said already but I can't say enough that's something that is a really hard to happen is to to create both Okay. So what are you going to do on this side? So we're going to tie it together, and I want it to be um, just a little bit different. Not every side has to match exactly the same. Again, stepping in where the creativity part comes in. I want kind of a similar vibe. So we're going to take a little bit of a diagonal back. I'm gonna elevate it a little bit just so that it falls in a softer line, just to create the, the movement going back. And I'm not gonna make it too precise because again, it's a fringy hairline area, but I do want that diagonal back flow. So a little softer so that it leaves me some of that edginess. And then I'm gonna just pick a little bit of an area right here. Pull that down. And then I'm going to create some strength. A little bit more. Yeah, and really once you do that, it's, it's almost like it's exaggerated that point. Like it's made it look so much longer than it really is. Mm -hmm. And now we've got pieces that can come over that and don't have to be integrated 100% in there. So I can slide some of that out of the way, bring this down, strengthen the line a little bit more, but then when the top comes over it, it's gonna be nice and soft. So we'll still have softer pieces, you know, integrated into that. Right, so we'll be able to keep that really soft and flowy. We're gonna keep going back. I'm gonna slide this in here and elevate again and find our length. Now we're gonna get a little bit cleaner coming from the top there and we're gonna start our graduation all the way back. Stopping at my second knuckle, let's readjust and move that back. Diagonal back again, and then I'm just gonna slide the comb in right underneath, lift up, that way I can pick up a little bit of my previous guide, move forward into the next, stop at my second knuckle, readjust, and then now we're gonna start doing diagonal back all the way into the nape area, and this is where we really wanna tie this together. Looks like Stephanie's got a tattoo on this side, too. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just pull this back and make sure it's clipped out of the way so that we've got a clear view of what's happening here. So Jody just asked, I, I always struggle around the ear on my left side far more than the right side. So Jody, if you're right-handed, I am guess, which I'm guessing, it's because you're very, it's very easy for you to work fingers pointed up and cut palm to palm. And you, what you wanna make sure you do is on the left side, flip your hands over, put your fingertips down, but still cut palm to palm. Don't cut on top of your knuckle. Cause I have a strong feeling what I've seen in the past with most hairdressers having trouble on the left side around the ear, it's because they're actually getting in the way of their, the knuckles are getting in the way of the hair. So try that, that would be my first uh, guess on trying to help you out as far as from one side to the other. Uh, a general rule, and if you've noticed, when Brandon's been working with these diagonal back sections, his thumb on his left hand has been pointed in the direction he's working. What that means is when he was on the left side of the head and he was working towards the center or towards the occipital bone, 
His fingertips were down and his thumb was pointed in the direction of the occipital bone. On this right side now, if you see his fingers uh, tips go up, and his thumb is pointing in the direction of the occipital bone. That's a general rule. Beneath the, if you're working beneath the parietal ridge with wet hair, generally speaking, your thumb should always be pointing in the direction that you're moving. Oh, our good friend Hannah Ruth Evans just logged on. <laughs> she says, looking so pretty, Brandon and Stephanie. Love the cape. This cape is actually a throwback from an old Van Michael logo that Hannah had made. Uh, she is the queen of merchandise. She is definitely the, uh, if nobody knows how to logo a company better than Hannah. So, uh, you know, thank you, Hannah. Thank you for the cape. And Jody, I hope that helped you. Thank you as well. Uh, we are getting a lot of new people logging on again. Uh, we've got quite a people, few people watching at this point in time, and uh, this is looking really good. Uh, again, this is Daniel Holzberger from Van Michael Salons in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my friend Brandon Dara is right here. He has been cutting this really cool mullet. I'm gonna walk around Stephanie again just to show you what he has done so far. On this left side, he started off with a diagonal back, very high graduation sectioning, worked all the way to the back until he hit basically the mastoid area. Right between the mastoid bone and the cartilage of the ear, he used a stationary guide and it did kind of almost like a scooping cutting technique so that he could maintain this C shaping with all this length in the bottom. He carved out that ear to create a really strong point to accent Stephanie's cheekbones. Then from there, worked into the crown used a, a center section, creating a flat line above the, above the occipital bone to the crown area, uh, using pivoting sections, which ended up actually creating a little bit more of an internal concave layer, but you can see that the weight is pushing on this basically right behind the ear through the mastoid bone, it's just so that that C kind of accents Stephanie's jawline. And something that I had said earlier is, Oh my goodness, I am so blown away with someone who can cut really cool, crazy hair and make it pretty. That's when you know someone is a great hairdresser versus just a good hairdresser. And Brandon's doing an amazing job with Stephanie's hair. Much appreciated, Daniel. So sectioning away, starting back over in my center point. So we basically created panel cutting so we've cut this side panel, we've cut this side panel. We've used graduation techniques using diagonal back sections to create a little bit of a flow. We've used a stationary guide from that first panel and we over directed the second panel back to it to create a nice flow, that arcing shape. Now we're connecting back here and we're gonna be using that same pie shaping that we used on this side, we're gonna pie shape one, two, three, four, and we're gonna diagonally push that hair forward by pie shaping around, creating a little bit of a pivot triangular graduation. So starting with that, we're gonna section away, a little bit diagonal. Keep our hair nice and clean out of the way. Get this hair out of the way. Yeah, that's something that I think is unbelievably important, especially when you're dealing with this many techniques, this advanced of cutting, you can get really lost in a haircut if you don't keep your work clean. And that's one thing that I've noticed throughout your entire haircut. You've been extremely clean with your work, extremely precise. Even when you're doing a little bit of point cutting, even when you've been doing some slice cutting, everything is very methodical and everything has been done with true precision. You know, trying to just keep things organized is really the key, you know, to creating balance and not having to go back into a lot of balance, you know, correction. You should be able to keep it pretty smooth and balanced if you keep clean sections. And that's really, you know, super important. And then when I'm teaching a younger group, you know, who doesn't uh, have the experience, I always make them section every single thing away and uh, you know, using clips when I'm teaching. And then you can learn, soon learn to just use the weight of the water to section the hair away. But in the beginning, clips are absolutely necessary. But uh, you know, making sure we're creating a nice steep concave here, coming off the crown, you know, building it out, letting everything else drop out. And it's creating a nice fall 
nice collapse under the occipital bone and then just her natural texture is so perfect for this. She's got an amazing wave and it's just gonna show this off beautifully. So we're gonna keep flowing forward. We're gonna section away, pivot by pivot. We're pushing the previous section forward into the next section so that it gives you a rounded form around the head shape. You know, if you were over directing it back to the previous section, you'd be gain gaining weight. We don't really wanna do that. So I wanna make sure that if I have my guide and my next piece here, I'm gonna get this out of the way, nice and clean. And so I have my guide and my next piece. I wanna make sure I'm pushing that guide forward into my next, not dragging the other one back to the guide. It's gonna create a, a quarter inch difference in length and that's very important, especially if we're trying to create a rounded form through the back and kind of a collapsed head shape form. So just elevating that up, nice and strong. Letting everything else collapse out. I like the way that that's just falling right into place. So I'm gonna keep doing the same thing and we're gonna move forward. Each one moves forward versus the next, creating that collapse. Prefer this side. <clears throat> And just elevate up a little bit. That is definitely starting to look very rock star. And so these are the last pieces of the disconnection because we stopped here with the underneath. So we've got all of this underneath and then we've got the last pieces of disconnection and we wanna make sure that we continue our pivot so that when we're done, we're pointing that way with the disconnection going that way so that we've created really a nice opposite flow with the disconnection going back and the over the top going forward. So we're just gonna keep pivoting from the crown. We're gonna make sure that our guide gets pushed upwards into our sectioning. And last one, so we're gonna keep going and make sure we're pushing forward. Lifting it up, there's our guide. And you can see the angle of my finger is now pointing out that way, which is gonna go forward above that and disconnect over the undercut. And then you can see that going right over and going forward that, that way. It really looks good. So then you can kind of shake that loose. So it depends on how it's worn. You can wear it forward, you almost won't see the disconnection or you can really pop that back and expose it. And now we're gonna to tie together the crown through the top and the fringe. Stephanie's a rock star. Okay. So I think what we're gonna do now is starting at the crown, same spot. And what I wanna do is I wanna kinda of pivot so that I'm disconnecting over my side panels a little bit. So it looks like you're taking basically a slightly diagonal section from the crown uh, and you're, are you elevating that up or pulling off to the side? I'm gonna pick up my guide from here in the crown, right there, and then I'm just gonna follow my section and elevate straight up awesome. and then let that just collapse over. So you're taking like a slightly diagonal section, lifting it up vertically and working from that short piece in the crown. Short piece in the crown right here. Should I be here? And now I can get, yeah, get your finger angle pretty good. So 
So then we're just gonna keep going and we're gonna pivot. And it looks like to me that you're really kind of pivoting with the natural growth of the hair, which I mean, knowing how thick Stephanie's hair is and how messy she likes it to be and how much movement she likes, that's probably a smart thing to be working with the actual angle of the hair versus trying to cut, say like horizontally against it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her hair definitely has a lot of movement to it. So we're just gonna work with that movement. And she's got a lot of weight on there that we're taking out right now. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun because it, it was real bulky through here at the top. So we're gonna get a, a new shape there through the crown. So I love it. Our good friend Raphael says he loves the haircut and he loves that cape that Hannah made for us. That it, it, it's definitely a hit. Um, miss you, Raphael. We miss all seeing you at all the shows, brother. Yeah, hopefully soon enough we'll all be getting to go see shows in person again. Is um, definitely missing that. That's definitely one of the things that I really love about this industry. One great thing that Hairbrain has done is kept us all together through this crazy pandemic. You know, it's definitely been the best way of doing education, you know, across the globe without having to get on a plane or going in to see someone. Uh, so I definitely have to give a shout out to Gerard and Amy and all the people that are really putting that together through Hairbrain. Um, it's really helped us so much stay creative through these uh, crazy times. And I cannot wait to, uh, next time we get to go to a show one-on-one -on -one and actually give Raphael a hug because he is an awesome dude. If anybody has ever met, you've never met somebody who's got more energy than that guy. I wish I could buy Positive energy. Yeah. Positive, Positive energy, absolutely. Positive energy, great dude. So now... So what I'm doing, I'm just pivoting and I've decided to make my, my section just a little bit asymmetric based on the way her hair moves. Her hair moves a little bit that way. So I'm gonna work with that, put a little bit more weight on this corner here in the front. Yeah, let that short hair, you know, in, in just general rules of physics, short hair pushes long hair. And so by pivoting like that, you're gaining just a little bit more length, which means you're just gonna work with the natural growth pattern of the head. So I think that's a that's really, as I'm watching you cut this, I'm thinking, yeah, everything he's doing, in my opinion, makes perfect sense. So going back and finding my disconnected line here. Now what I'm going to do is tie together this and this. And I'm stopping here. Everything's going to stop right there. And I had a stationary guide there. Now I'm going to take this entire section and lift it up here. And this entire section and lift it over there. So this has a little more weight to it. A little more asymmetric. So we're going to create our stationary. We're going to comb that out of the way. We're going to take everything and elevate it up. I've had a couple of people tell me that Stephanie looks like a rock star. And then uh, a couple of people actually mentioning that they can't wait to try this out themselves. Good. It's a fun one. So you can see that heaviness in her texture going together. Yeah, it looks phenomenal. Like really rocking. You know, and we'll get a little bit of a push that way. So now let's break down her front hairline just a little bit. So. I think I'm gonna take that little triangle just a little bit shorter. Small, thin section right in the front. Completely disconnected. This one, you're gonna over direct to that section back. All completely disconnected from the rest of this. And then this little tiny triangle right here. On the other side of it, we're gonna push up to that. 
So we've created a miniature inversion slash disconnection just in this triangle right here. So you can see the effect of it, right? Where it fans it out and gives it a softer sort of edge there. And now we're just gonna leave that tied in, right? Completely disconnected. And now we're gonna go through and just remove a little bit of this weight that's on this side. I like the length and the feeling of it, but it's heavy. So we're just gonna go through and comb it down for just a second, all in that direction. And then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a slice. All right. Yeah, and that's we have direction. people coming from all over again. It looks like a whole new wave of people have just been logging on. So I'm just going to give an overview of what Brandon has done here. Uh, Brandon is cutting our friend Stephanie. He's done this amazing mullet in which he used a little bit of a very high graduation diagonal back sectioning. Then used this working almost like as if you were doing a very high kind of almost more like along the lines of like a men's business cut on the side, then stopped his traveling guide into a stationary guide and brought everything through so that you could get this nice C shaping to create a bunch of length for that uh, very cool mullety effect. Then working through the back, he used a flat line right here in the center, but used pivoting sections to gain a little bit of length. That flat line that was cut from uh, from the crown cutting out actually created an internal concave, which has then pushed this hair right behind the ear to really accent Stephanie's jawline beautifully. On the opposite side, he actually used a bit of disconnection to hang over off of his undercut on the right side of the head, and then using a pivoting pinwheel effect starting on the left top side he worked a uh, worked vertical sections and has created quite a bit of a weight shift from the left to the right and then did a little bit of a disconnection piece on her fringe. So now it looks like he's just canceling off a little bit of weight through the top and uh, I have a feeling he's uh, going to start blow drying pretty soon because uh, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot more that he needs to cut. You can see he's just going through and making sure all of his shape is really nice and clean. But really nice cut so far, Brandon. Thanks, guys. Really having a good time doing it. It's so much fun. Gonna leave, put a little bit of leave-in conditioner, a little bit of gel. My favorite's the flaxseed aloe from Aveda. And we have Aveda's cherry almond leave-in conditioner. I'm making a nice puddle in my hand. We have a couple of people saying that they can uh, remember cutting things like this back in the 70s, some people saying in the 80s. I definitely have a little bit of that top when you were doing that panel, I was getting a little bit of a Ziggy Dart Sardust kind of feel in the crown. I mean, definitely, you've, through the years, mullets have been an amazing look that uh, people have been cutting forever. And it's one thing, it can go from looking extremely kind of uh, Billy Ray Cyrus in the 1980s, or you can make it look something that's very chic, like what Brandon's done today. So you can see she's got it's this funny, the name of my shape. collection is Sil uh, Sexy Ray Silas. Sexy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> and, uh, one gentleman named Robert actually was just mentioning that he has, uh, he's still in hair school, but these lives have really helped him in school. I love hearing stories like that, about how great the, uh, the lives that uh, Hair Brain is doing have created. So Brandon is, uh, now looks like he's actually gonna work with the natural texture of her hair. This is something that with mullets, with any kind of shape, when you've got some natural texture in there, that is one of those, real, it's a really cool technique to do where you just diffuse the hair from the natural texture, almost as if you did not uh, blow dry 
her hair at all, like as if it was air dried. Uh, and it's just kind of playing with his fingers, just piecing apart all the little textures. Uh, Dominic Bertani uh, just logged in and said, that's SRS. It's great to see you, Dominic. Uh, and uh, Kelly just says, uh, the Carol Brady cut is back. I think that was a little bit of a, <laughs> of a little bit of a, a sort of tongue in cheek there with that one. It's okay. If you know Stephanie, she's gonna rock the hell out of this. <laughs> But I do like using a diffuser for the natural texture with her. I feel like it's just going to be a, a better way to go. Uh, her hair can expand quite a bit. So I was getting ready to say, I, I, I've, I've cut Stephanie's hair before. I yeah. know that that hair can expand if you're not careful. So I think, you know, when you're working with a, a gel like that, you're going to get a, a better vibe out of it and more of a natural feel. If I was, you know, Stephanie styling her hair every day, I probably would just put stuff in it and leave. Right. I don't know that I would actually style her hair. I think the cut should speak for itself at that point, you know. Um, it almost reminds me of like doing a wet set from the 1920s, like yeah. with, with her texture. Because her texture definitely has that effect where you can use gel, use some cream, kind of comb it into place and then let it just, you know, grow yeah. on its own. So somebody's shouting out to the Salon Professional Academy in Evansville in Evansville, Indiana. I am not familiar with that school, but I will definitely reach out to them to say hi. Hopefully that they, uh, everybody there is watching this as well. Hopefully some of their students are getting something out of this. A couple of different people have said, you know, amazing work, strong section, strong technical skills. One gentleman said bravo. So people are really enjoying what we've, uh, what we've Created here, Brandon. Much, much appreciated for everybody, but more importantly, much appreciated to Stephanie, who already rocks a mullet every day and let me trim her hair for her and, and put my signature on it. You know, in yeah, the way it looks that I a do. little. From looking at the floor, I think it was a little bit more than a trim, my friend. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's my version of a mullet, you know, for sure. Yeah. She just said, "I can't touch her length," so I said, "Okay." <laughs> now that it's most of the way dry, you're just breaking it up a little bit? A little bit, yeah. That's something that really... Uh, I have to say, I love when people do, when they, they realize they're setting the hair with the, with the diffuser and then actually letting it, starting to play with it a bit more. <laughs> a couple, of, couple more people saying that they love your technique, but a couple more people also saying that they love the cape. Uh, I definitely love that cape as well. Uh, bravo to Hannah for uh, getting that put together. Thank you everyone very oh, much. Well.